they give this as kind of an assumption. Actually, the textbook says um, LOG, but we've just talked about that already. It's uh, basic. Okay. Now, before we move off that, why is this true, or how can you show that it's true? It's sort of um, an awkward way of writing things. It's like, why not? Why? Why have e and then put a log up there in the power where you can just say a? Well, as you'll see shortly, it's sort of more useful for calculus purposes to have things in base e, so that you can prove things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do so. So how do we how do we show that this is actually the case? Uh, you might want to have this off on the side. Okay. So let's just define, for instance. Let's let k equal to, um, now, we're going to try and think about logs and exponentials as inverse of each other, right? So let's just start with something <laughs> simple, like that. So that's natural log, okay? Now, as you've been doing already, can we convert this from a log equation to an exponential equation? How would I rewrite it so it had no log expressions in it? Okay, base here becomes the base here, right? The subject is the power, and that's what you've got. Okay? Happy with that? Alright, but hold on a second. We're really, really close to here, right? Can you see, I know what k is. I've just defined it, right? So if I wanted to, if it was convenient for me, I can just, let's, let's bring this over here. I can write e to the power of, instead of k, I'll just say natural log of a. That's it. That's all there is to it, okay? But well, people often get confused by this, they find it hard to remember. Okay, but it's a really, really useful trick. So it's sort of, it doesn't really fit under log laws or index laws, it's kind of both. So you may like to put it under where you've got your heading for log laws because that's, I suppose, that's the closest place in your notes where it would belong. Right, now, since we've established that, they want us to use that to find the derivative of 2 to the x, which you actually already know. But they want you to use this fact to put this in a form which will actually prove it. Okay? So how do we go about doing it? What would be the first step? How could you use something like this? Someone has done it. There was quite a few of you. Someone want to suggest what's the first step? Okay, so, so what I'm going to try and use is this 2, right? That's, that's the problem, as it were. Okay? So I'm going to replace that, that 2 with a e to the log 2, okay? So this is going to be the derivative of e to the log 2 to the power of x. That thing in the brackets, that's my 2. Okay, so the whole thing's to the power of x. Okay. Great, now what? Think about your index laws. What can I do here that might make things a little easier for me? My, um, my, two, my two powers here, right? They're really... They're multiplying, right? And multiplication uh, can be done in any order. Okay, so I can swap the x and the log 2. Right? So I can do this. Let's see, e to the x to the power of log 2. Now, why is this better than what I had before? This, this is something, remember we were talking about this before. I think I heard moments of it. And this is a problem I know more about than this problem. Okay, I can deal with this a little better. Because e to the x is something we're super familiar with. I could differentiate this with chain rule, right? There's my inside function. What's the outside function? What is the outside function? If you had to classify it, you know all kinds of families of functions, right? How do you classify the outside thing? If you said let u equal to e to the x, what's the outside function? Mm. What, what, kind of, what kind of function is it? It's just a, um, isn't it, isn't it the first one that you learn? It's just a power function, isn't it? Because log two is just a constant. It's a weird constant, but it's just a constant, okay? So we know that if you're differentiating x to the power of n, then the derivative is nx to the n minus one. So in this case, right, what you've got is for m, you've got log two. That's convenient, log two. Okay. So what do you get there? Well, the power comes out the front. The power happens to be log 2. And then you take one away from the power. There we go. Log 2 <laughs> minus 1. Uh, 1. Okay, happy? Yes. So let's bring that back down here. I actually kind of skipped a step. We were doing chain rule, weren't we? Okay. So the whole thing about chain rule is that you've got to do the inside, 
then you've got to do the outside. Actually, it doesn't matter which order you do it. Okay. The derivative of the inside function is e to the x. And then you multiply by the derivative of the outside function, which we just worked out. Okay. So what have I got here? Now this is log 2, but here I was doing x to the power of log 2. This is e to the x to the power of log 2. Okay. So log 2 is out the front times e to the x. And now I reduce the power by 1. Log 2 minus 1. How are your brains going so far? Are we happy? Are there any problems? Looks okay to me. What might be the next step? What could we do to make this a little simpler? I can, I can do some factorizing. What might be the most useful thing to factorize out? Okay, so let's have a look at that for a second. E to the x. Um, you sort of know in advance that the e to the x is going to go somewhere because you know what this derivative is. You know what it's actually equal to, and it has no e to the x's in it. Okay? So when you have a look at what e to the x terms you have, you've got this one, and then you've got now, okay, look at it carefully. This guy here, okay, it's a bit tricky because the power's a bit weird. Can we rewrite it in a way that would make it a little more obvious what this is actually equal to and how it interacts with this? When you've got, say, a to the power of m minus n, what's that equal to? Index laws. We're dividing, aren't we? Okay, because a to the minus n, that's division. Okay, so I have the same thing here. <laughs> See, I've got e to the x. There's a constant, and that minus one means I'm going to be dividing. So let's keep rewriting this. I've got e to the x, I've got a log 2. Now what do I have here? e to the x times log 2, but then this minus 1 is going to be division. Okay, do you see that? Okay. So that's good. That's nice. This guy, this guy, gone. Okay? We're almost there, aren't we? Uh, it's kind of a bit cheating since we already know what the answer is going to be. So you're like, good, you got the log 2, check. Okay? What do I do here? How do I make it clearest? Don't skip any steps. I'm going to do the same trick that I did here, right? but in reverse. So to show that this, there's a, there's a 2 here, there's a 2 hiding in there, I want to switch these back around. So I've got the log 2 at the front. Let's swap those indices. So e to the log 2 there, and then the x is outside. Aha, see it? There it is, that's what we started with. Okay, That's log 2 times to the x as required. Okay. So the important thing for me is to make sure that probably the easiest uh, steps to skip are uh, things like when you swap these powers around, you're kind of like, yeah, that's fine. I don't have to do that. Okay. If it's a show question, which is very likely because um, this is a really easy result to get, you can just quote it. right? If it's a show question, you're expected to show those kinds of steps, right? that kind of level of detail. So you're like, yeah, I know what's going on. I understand how to manipulate these index laws to get the answer at the end, not just because I know what the answer is already. 